Okay. Um, and so, oh yeah, it says we're live. Okay, great. Um, so everybody, welcome. Uh, uh, for some reason, I call this the Spark webinar, which a lot of it is happening over the live stream, but we're also in person this year. And I think for the first time uh, in four years, we have an in-person component to uh, the Digital Summer Clinic webinar. Uh, we were gonna do one in 2020, but of course uh, those plans all went uh, kaput um, and uh, we've been doing them online ever since. Um, so I'm Bud Gibson. Uh, I am the director of the Digital Summer Clinic uh, and also the founder of it uh, 10 years ago in partnership with Ann Arbor Spark and in particular, uh, Bill Mayer, uh, who not here today, but played a key role. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about the Digital Summer Clinic, what it is, There'll be a chance for you to ask questions both in person um, and also if you're on the live stream. So, uh, you know, just uh, type something in uh, if you're on the live stream into whatever platform you're watching it on. Um, and so uh, let's proceed. Okay, so all of the information that you want to know about the Digital Summer Clinic is at this link. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to show it several times. I've got a QR code. I'll leave it up for a few seconds. There's a QR code. There's a, a bit.ly short link in there. Um, and uh, those will lead you to all of the information you need to know. It's the same links that you've been receiving via email. Okay, so, um, uh, but if you just never hurts to show a link. Okay. So if you want to participate, so I'm doing the, you know, you never know, technology is going to fail or whatnot, so I've got it front loaded. Uh, if you want to participate, make sure you sign up for an interview. We have interview slots on April 18th, that's a week from today, April 19th, which is obviously a week from tomorrow. Then the following week, the same two days, Thursday and Friday, the 25th and the 26th. Uh, we, I think we're all full up. For next week which is we weren't at, at the beginning of the week we were not but we are now but we definitely still have slots available uh in the second week okay uh the interview is really the start of the application process in particular if we haven't well it's always the start even if we have worked with you before but in particular if we have not worked together before the interview is a chance for us to kind of establish what your needs are, what it is we can really provide. Can we find a match between where you are as a company and the kind of service we can offer? Okay, that that's for us. We're looking for wins, uh, mutual wins together. And uh, so that's much easier to establish in a conversation. Uh, then we follow it up with a project description, which kind of sounds scary. Some but is, uh, you know, really a couple of paragraphs typically. Uh, can be more, okay, but uh, the, 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 the barrier is a couple of paragraphs. And usually during the interview, we zero in on some potential projects uh, and you have a good idea of what it is we can all do together. And then we ask you to write that up. In some sense, it's a commitment on your part to at least stay in that kind of ballpark because that's what we're going to use uh, to figure out who to match you with amongst our intern recruits. Um, all of this, again, that's the same link I shared before. Uh, it's on, we call it the, for some reason, historical reasons, we called it the company interview guide, uh, but it is probably uh, really better phrased as the how to participate in the digital summer clinic as a company all you need to know in two and a half short pages. Um, perhaps we'll rename it next year, but that's still called interview guide this year. Um, so that's it. All right. So if the live stream kicks out now, you know everything you need to know to sign up as a company. Okay. So, um, so we front loaded it with info. Um, Ask questions in Q&A or chat, or if you have questions as we go along, uh, just feel free, you know, raise up your hands or shout out um, and I'll repeat the question and then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So don't feel like you have to wait until the end, you know, as questions arise, please feel free to ask them. Um, and then we're live streaming, uh, hopefully, 
on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. We have found sometimes the uh, live stream, sometimes on one of these platforms will kick out, but it hasn't in a long time. So I think we've got that mastered. Okay. So I'm going to talk about what the clinic is. Uh, I'm then going to introduce the members of the mentoring team who are here. We have a num we actually have two of them. Uh, we have a third who is threatening to appear, um, and she may appear. Uh, and then, um, uh, uh, and then I'm going to have two of our former interns uh, stand where I am now and just talk about their experience in the clinic, what they did for their companies. Uh, so you can get, you know, from the horse's mouth, all right, you'll, you'll see the kind of people you're going to be able to get and the sorts of things that they are able to do. Um, and then, you know, I'll come back on for some final words. We'll have Q and A, um, you know, the, the mentors, uh, uh, will possibly get involved too, uh, during this, um, uh, and answer questions you can ask them. Uh, and I'll introduce that. Well, hold on. I have introductions later. So let me, let me do things as they're planned out here on the slides. So this is, uh, me, uh, but I guess you're seeing me right now. Uh, our student site for student recruiting is digitalsummer.clinic. If you Google Digital Summer Clinic, it takes you right to that site, okay? Uh, and you'll see on that site um, all sorts of testimonials from students, stories about student interns. Uh, we also have interviews uh, with uh participants, uh, previous company participants uh, on our video page. Um, and, uh, uh, and so, you know, you want to kind of get more of a picture of what it's all about. The student site is a good place to go. Um, and um, so um, that's me. I should probably mention, I, I think I mentioned to folks coming in, uh, and I may have mentioned at the beginning, I'm the founder of this from 10 years ago. Um, uh, and uh, I have, um, back in the day, I got an MBA at the Wharton School, worked in consulting for a few years, uh, then went back and got a PhD at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, where strangely enough, uh, my dissertation had a strong dose of machine learning in it, but many years ago before the... Uh, current uh, explosion of, um, you know, uh, two trillion parameter models. We, 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 that we, we thought thousands of parameters was a big model back in my day. So, you know, several orders of magnitude larger, uh, we didn't even contemplate. But nonetheless, um, that, and then I worked at U of M for nine years. Um, and then um, uh, I've been at Eastern now, uh, strangely enough, for, um, 18. Um, uh, so twice as long at Eastern as I was at U of M. Um, so what is the clinic? Okay. So the clinic is a mentored internship. Okay. So uh, we go out and we recruit a bunch of students. We're in the process right now, students and recent grads. And a recent grad is defined as somebody who has graduated in the past 18 months. Okay. Uh, and we were kind of put to the test on that one in the pandemic. What does recent actually mean? Uh, and we extended it out to 18 because people got uh, pandemic dislocation. Um, and uh, so, uh, but we're, we're now at 18 steady. So what we do is we recruit these students. We place them in companies. So you can think of us as acting like an agency. Okay. So we go out, we talk. We talk with companies, we get project descriptions, um, and then um, we're, we'll be interviewing students in May, so next month, uh, currently recruiting them. We've got close to 400 applicants. We expect somewhere on the order of 500 by the end of the month when we close applications. And uh, so we go out and interview them. We kind of really test them uh, for the, their ability to show initiative. OK, um, and, um, you know, kind of pull up their socks and get going uh, when the going is tough. Now, remember, these are 20 year olds and you've probably all encountered 20. Well, largely 20 year olds. Grant did it when he was 30. And we have people who are in their 30s and 40s who are coming back and getting new careers um, who we've had in the program. But I would say 80 percent 
are between the ages of uh, 19 and 25. Okay, so we have these students. Uh, we go through, we vet them on some basic things, really look for people. We have them tell us a story of where they showed initiative or were self-starter. Uh, we try and instill that ethos in the group um, because we know we're going to be putting them in small startups where things can be a little topsy turvy. Um, and, you know, you've got to kind of figure out, you know, when water starts to come in the ship, uh, you know, figure out how to bail. Um, and uh, if there's suddenly a new objective over the horizon, um, you know, how to skillfully. Uh, switch your direction uh, in that regard, but also making sure that you're still meeting expectations around, well, you talked about some other projects that you were supposed to do, and now suddenly your boss is coming to you and saying, well, we have these new things that suddenly came up. Make sure the boss understands, you know, that that some priorities might have to shift. So we that's a lot of what we do. Um, in terms of um, selecting the students and then also mentoring them. So there are two students per company, two interns per company. Uh, it's a nine week affair that starts on June 10th and goes through August 9th. Um, and all of this, by the way, is in the link that I sent you. So, uh, you know, note it down and everything, but, but uh, it's repeated in multiple places, okay? Um, and they get 10 hours a week each. So that's 20 hours per intern. Now, when I say they get 10 hours per week each, uh, Spark for incubator clients, which I'm assuming everybody in here is some version of incubator client or perhaps on their way to being one. Incubator clients get those 10 weeks for free, okay? Uh, 10 hours for free, I mean to say. And then, um, uh, and then it's up to you. We do have companies that say, well, I want to go beyond 10 hours, and they come up with some way to do it. OK, maybe they've got revenue, OK, which allows them to hire people for more time. Maybe uh, they they get another intern grant from Spark uh, that, that pay typically about half the intern wage because they decide they want to beef up. But 10 hours guaranteed. Uh, and uh, so think about that. So 20 hours between the two of them. Um, and they work on a project developed by you. So one of the reasons that we go through and we have this whole uh, company recruitment process, we interview you um, it, and, and uh, you know, we figure out the fit, is we want uh, to get down what that project should be to make sure that we're kind of getting you the right kind of people, okay? And that we're setting expectations. Um, and, um, and so that's what happens with that. Now, um, the interns do more than the internship. So we make this clear to them from the very start. So there's 10 hours a week of paid internship for the interns. But they have two mandatory meetings outside of the internship. One of them is a weekly coaching session that happens on Tuesday or Wednesday evening, either at 6 or 7 p.m. And that's for the interns, OK? Um, and we have them divided up into cohorts. Uh, we do something, if you're familiar with uh, agile project management, we do something similar to the stand-up in each meeting, except we combine it with a coaching session. So uh, interns uh, give, each team gives a weekly progress report um, where they cover some key things. Interns see, oh my, we're all going through the same thing. Uh, they're able to kind of discuss issues. Well, you know, uh, last week I thought we were working on this, but now this week it seems we're working on this completely other thing, and I'm not entirely sure what to do. Um, and so we talk, and what we do is coach them uh, about communication and connecting with their bosses, uh, managers, and making sure that the uh, manager understands, you know, what it is this person is doing, um, and, uh, you know, make, making sure their priorities are what you hope for. Um, and so, um, so that's the cohort meeting. Uh, and that is effective uh, uh, in, in terms typically of rooting out problems early. Now, if you yourselves discover something that's not working out, that does happen. I mean, I don't want to be Pollyannish here and tell you it's always wonderful. Um, it's not. Okay, uh, for the most part, we achieve a good outcome 
Uh, but there's a percentage of the cases, uh, we try to keep it to, you know, so we hire 48 interns, we try to keep it to 5%. So that's 2% per year where, you know, frankly, something doesn't work out. I mean, just being, you know, upfront here. Um, and we'd like to find out about that early because we can fix a problem fixed early is a problem that stays reasonably small. Okay. Uh, the later it goes, uh, nobody is happy at the end of it. Okay. Um, and so communication back and forth, particularly reaching out to me, I'm kind of the representative reaching out to me. Um, and uh, we, and, and then I might reach out to you if, if it, I, I'm sort of perceiving that there might be trouble in paradise. Uh, and we notice too, because um, if, there is trouble in paradise. It tends to show up across the spectrum. Okay, it's not usually not hidden. Okay, um, and uh, then we have an all hands meeting, uh, and the all hands meeting is something we 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 will probably invite some of you to come participate in it. Uh, that's an in person meeting, face to face interaction. Um, we have. Uh, uh, basically a couple of parties uh, during the internship. Uh, one of them is a Taco Thursday night, and then we have a graduation party. And it's meant to give people a chance to kind of get to know each other, okay? Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, communications are a lot easier when you just see somebody across the room versus having to like set up an email meeting, or well, you know, a phone meeting or a Zoom meeting or something like that. So that's the all hands, okay? And we brought that as we, we were completely in person uh, prior to uh, the pandemic. For two years during the pandemic, we were completely online. Um, and then uh, we started to come back in 2022. Uh, last year, 2023 was where we implemented this full hybrid approach. And I think this is where we're sitting because we actually find the mentoring sessions uh, online are very effective. Um, uh, more people can give feedback. You'll notice right now I'm up here talking. Nobody else is talking, okay? But when you do it online, people can uh, be chatting back and forth uh, and additional people can be providing feedback uh, during the mentoring session. So you can get multiple pieces of feedback coming in at lunch, uh, at, at, uh, coming in at once, I mean to say. And if you, uh, you know, if you've been to conferences where they have an IRC back channel, I'm probably dating myself with that one, uh, it's very similar to that, okay? Um, and um, you can choose in terms of your company, uh, whether you wanna be fully in person with the interns, uh, fully remote or hybrid. Um, and I think most companies today are operating typically in some kind of hybrid mode uh, from what I've seen. Um, but fully in person is just fine. Often interns prefer it and interns like in-person interaction um, because, you know, so for the most part, these are people who are very early on in their career. It helps them understand how the whole thing works to be around other people. Okay, there's just a lot of communication that comes through uh, when you're in person, particularly when you're a young person just trying to figure it out from the first time. And to give you an idea of what that might look like, I mean, uh, you know, if you're a Spark client, those in person interactions might be a two hour meeting each week or some other time frame of meetings in person here at Spark Central or out at Spark East. OK, or in a coffee shop. OK, we've had that, too. Um, you know, whatever works for you. So, you know, it, uh, assuming you don't have a grandiose office, uh, none of well, you kind of have one, Nick, but um, but but none of the rest of us do, uh, uh, at least on the mentoring team. So. Um, so. All right. And the clinic itself will be hybrid. So that's the clinic in a nutshell. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So let me come back. Yeah. Cohort meetings, the all hands meeting, just to clarify, um, are not part of the internship. They're not part of the paid hours. So you have 10 hours working with them. The cohort meeting and uh, the all hands meeting are stuff they do outside of the internship. Now, as I've been mentioning, uh, 
when we think about bringing uh, you know, companies coming into the process, our big question is, can we come up with a concrete set of projects where clinic interns can provide value to your company? So we, are, we have some graduate students, okay, uh, but 90% of the students any given year are undergrads. And um, we have found concrete works. And concrete can be, um, so just to give an example of some of the kinds of projects we often get, you know, develop or redesign a website, that's concrete, okay? Um, help us figure out uh, product market fit, not concrete enough, um, get me, uh, you know, go through and discover a set of potential sales leads um, with these criteria concrete. Okay, we've had, we've had people do that. Uh, we've had people do UX research, UX design. We've had people do um, uh, digital advertising, um, uh, social media marketing, content creation. Okay, so, um, so uh, I'll give an example from the very start of the clinic. Um, uh, we had a woman, Grace, then Grace Shaw, I think her last name, I don't know how she pronounces her last name now. She got married and she married a guy who I think is Hebrew. Okay, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But she had a company called Warmaloo. And Warmaloo made warming blankets for premature babies. Okay, and these, these were activated by this cool mechanism and there was material science involved. And that's Grace's background. And so she, uh, she had all of this information about the science behind the heating blanket. And, uh, and when I went in, she gave me this whole uh, seminar on uh, phase transition, uh, which if you know, but if you remember your physics, uh, uh, heat uh, energy is either absorbed or given off in phase transitions, okay? And so, so she had uh, worked this out. And, um, and, and then the question was, well, how do you get firefighters was one of her potential markets. Well, the firefighter doesn't need to know all of that. They need to know that they can do this and it has these qualities uh, that will help them in their firefighting role. So we actually had a student and this was one of our, she was in her thirties, um, a fan wrote 64 blog pieces. I still am astonished at the amount of writing. Stacy, Stacy Lewis, 64 blog pieces um, uh, about uses of this technology, all written in layman's terms. Okay, so that's something that uh, interns can do. Um, and uh, inter we've had interns uh, create new interfaces, develop parts of apps. Now, if you're going to bring an intern, and we get computer science interns, if you're going to bring in an intern to do something, uh, you know, you want to do something around uh, developing a part of your app, 10 hours a week, you're probably going to want to supplement that, okay? Because uh, if you've ever done any kind of coding, getting the person into the code base, that takes time. I mean, you, you can't just throw some newbie on a pile of code and expect them to be productive. They, they need some time to figure it out and get going. Um, but we do provide um, those sorts of people and it's worked out um, well in the past. All right, so we have members of the field team. So um, these, now we actually do virtually everything through student workers. We call them field managers, um, kind of setting the expectation that they're going to manage Okay, um, and uh, so we have uh, two of them are actually doing um, a job fair uh, right now, uh, and those are uh, Sarah Matza, who Sarah, and then Mandira um, are doing the job fair, and then we have Sadie and Beyond here. So Sadie and Beyond, could you stand up and just turn around and wave at people? Uh, and um, Sadie was a uh, uh, was an intern last summer, um, and then um, uh, and Bjorn is a prospective intern for this summer, um, and uh, so that's how we operate. So this is sort of um, we make the whole system run uh, with this set of you know the the 
mechanics run with this set of workers. And actually, I mean, they're producing the live stream right now. They produce all of our social media content. I mean, obviously we oversee it, you know, but, but they are the hands that do it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, our live stream, we run a live stream series where we have guests. They do the guest recruiting, they prep the questions, they run the interviews. Um, and so, um, uh, quite, uh, quite a capable bunch. Now we're going to meet the mentors. Obviously there's me. We have Nick Woods from Google. Uh, and we have Sufjan Krunfla who goes by Dr. Q. Okay. Um, last name begins with Q. Uh, Kim Barker, uh, I received some sort of text message from her about how uh, she was delayed somehow. So, uh, oh, oh, she's, oh, she's doing it online. Okay. So, well, Kim, we're, we're giving you a shout out. Um, and then we have Ian Shirk, uh, who uh, uh, actually works remotely most of the time, and I believe is down in Florida right now, uh, although he uh, is mainly domiciled here in Michigan. Um, and uh, so to give you an idea of Nick and Ian, uh, Nick is, uh, uh, what's your role at Google, Nick? He's a senior account manager at Google. Uh, he was an intern in 2018, was it? 2018, uh, then went to work uh, for his company, Genomenon, um, and, uh, which is the world's largest genomics database. Um, and then um, he went to work uh, for iProspect um, and uh, then from iProspect to Google. iProspect is a marketing agency that works with GM. Um, and then Ian, uh, what has actually all of his experience has been in startups. Um, he uh, uh, was a very early employee of Career Now Brands, uh, which is um, uh, a sort of a hybrid affiliate marketing agency. Uh, they have a platform, and uh, what they do is is they they're paid per lead, uh, and they're they play in the education space, uh, which. Uh, education, educational institutions of various so, sorts are always looking for leads. And so they have a, a system to do this. Uh, it, it's right now, it's currently about 120 employees up in Royal Oak. Uh, he left there about a year and a half ago to go to work for a German um, artificial intelligence health informatics startup called ADA.com. Um, and uh, does a lot of work with performance marketing. Okay, um, and kind of a uh, performance marketing whiz. Um, and so, um, and then Sufjan, supply chain management, um, and uh, currently head of the Eastern Marketing Department. So just recently installed in that position. He was interim for a while, but now he's like the guy. Um, and, um, uh, and, and then Kim Barker um, is a management professor uh, and uh, really focused on culture and um, creating win-win situations, HR, that's her shtick. So we tried to broaden out the team. You'll, you'll notice a number of fairly technical people. Uh, and then Kim is our person who helps us figure out people. So, um, uh, and she's been, we added her last year. She's been a very valuable addition. Okay, so uh, I guess Grant, Sadie, who wants to go first? All right, all right, great. So just stand up here, talk loud so people can hear you, and I'll, I'll step to the side. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Grant. I was a marketing field manager here with the clinic, and I also was a 2022 intern. Uh, I graduated from Purdue University with a bachelor's in marketing. So to kind of give you a quick idea on one of the heavy hitter projects that I worked on, uh, I was working with a robot robotics delivery company uh, here in Ann Arbor. And the entire goal of the project that I had to work on was basically create a website from start to finish for them. Uh, just to kind of give you some hints prior to me starting on it, when I first started on the project, it was a landing page with two broken links and i had to basically create it from start to finish uh, trying to uh, push out the brand image that they wanted and the vision that they wanted so one of the first steps that i did to make sure that happened 
was me and my partner who had different skill sets. We met with the CEO and the president of the company to basically determine what they wanted, what their vision was. Uh, after that, working with uh, all the mentors here and going to the cohort meetings, we created a pretty good field plan on how we wanted it to run, how we wanted the pages and the landing pages to look like. Uh, we also started researching other companies and seeing kind of how they were working it and how they were doing things similar. Um, once we had those things uh, in place, uh, we learned the software that they were working with for their website design, and we basically put it together from start to finish. And it was a successful project at the end. And now the website's live um, and the brand image is completely put out there for everybody. Uh, we also did a couple other little projects for them, like getting their LinkedIn and things like that set up so they can, once with their, web, their website was launched, they could broadcast it to the world. Um, and then they actually did some stuff with the Detroit Auto Show. And we created brochures and other marketing uh, guides for them for the Detroit Auto Show, which were a couple of projects that we worked on. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Any questions for Grant? Yeah, it was a bit. It was a good experience, definitely for sure. Yeah, and and I think what talk about Grant. So I thought one of the things you brought to the table, talk about communications with the CEO. So there were some communication issues at the beginning, um, and one of the just sort of kind of how we wanted those channels to go with, like go through me communicating with them and communicating with us, how we we're gonna work. Um, and I actually went to the mentors here, got sort of some of their advice on how we would do that communication. And we found out texting was the best way. Usually you don't wanna text your boss, but you know that was the best way we were gonna get it done. And that was what we did. So we were texting back and forth and we set up weekly meetings to make sure that uh, basically all of our communication as we went through the project from start to finish was succeed successful. So, okay. okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how much time would you have preferred for communication from your CEO, president, owner of the company, ideally? So I can't speak for everybody, but I know for me, me and my partner who I was working with, we would do co-working sessions. So we'd just get on Discord or however we just would choose and we'd work together. Um, but for me, I felt it was the most productive at least once a week. And if we are going to hit some sort of like we're going to launch it like launch day, we met twice that week just to make sure before we put it out that everything was good, checked and all the blogs for everybody that was written was on there. The timeline we created was, you know, uh, working and everybody was viewing it correctly on their different devices. So I'd say for major projects, two weeks. And then as long as you're meeting with them every week, I, I'm pretty sure that'll keep them on the straight and narrow. So, yep. Great. All right. I'll uh, hop up and introduce Sadie. Um, let me also uh, throw in that, uh, so I, I told you we run this whole thing with students, right? And so I, I'm actually having the experience of working with the folks who work with you uh, to get them to do stuff that makes the whole clinic run. And we have a big meeting at the beginning of the week. It's an hour, okay? Um, and then we have, we're actually using, strangely enough, Notion to track our projects. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then we have a catch up at the end of the week, just to make sure that nothing has crashed or there, there's no problems. And that's typically about a half an hour. Okay. So there, you, you can't set it and forget it. You've got to, you've got to provide steering input. Okay. Sadi, come on up. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sadiksha Shrestha, but I go by Sadi or Sadie because it's kind of difficult to pronounce, obviously. Um, so I'm an international student from Nepal, and uh, this is my third year at Eastern Michigan University, and I'm studying international business marketing. Um, so basically, the first time um, when I joined Digital Summer Clinic, like I was very intimidated because being an international student, like it's very difficult to find internship at the first place. And when I got it, like it was like, you know, I was very like intimidated by and overwhelmed as well, like by seeing all the, you know, other teammates and everyone. And the first time when I joined the meeting, like the over Overall meeting and in Ypsilanti. So I was like very, very scared because, you know, I was even scared to talk to people, like share my experience and stuff. But then like um, I got to like meet my a teammate uh, who was from Michigan State University. So we worked uh, in a company called Meet Your Class, which was a startup run by University of Michigan, like sophomore students. So basically, um, 
it was a company um, for like, you know, to find roommates, just like right, roomies.com. Like it's for mostly like college students. So it was a best place for me to work with because, you know, being a college student, like I know, like, you know, what kind of roommates I want. And especially in, 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 as an international student, like, you know, I was also looking for that kind of things. So basically when I first joined the company, like um, as Grant said as well, in the first place, it's kind of difficult to communicate with the CEO and other members because I know. Like I know I don't know like the for the first week it was just me and my uh, like teammate who were like talking in the group like we use Slack for the you know all the work stuffs but it was just like two of us we were like communicating and it was kind of like off but from the second week maybe the CEO was also trying because he was like of the same age like you know he wasn't like starting like entrepreneur so uh, he was also trying to see how like everything is going and uh, in the second week like he was very comfortable with us and we tried to have that connection and that communication so basically for the company for the first time like i worked with my teammate who was a ux designer and since i'm like a marketing girl so like uh, so we both worked for a pitch take uh, where the ceo and the cmo or like i think the operating officers or ceo they went to detroit for a like uh incubator like uh yeah there was a whole session for that. So they went there. So the Peach Deck was very successful. And after that, I also worked uh, like, you know, as a digital marketing intern, because for me, like I did not do anything about like Ahrefs or like SEM brush, like, you know, like nothing like the backlinks, like authorizing and stuff like that. But then I had to do this like whole research. So I mostly like my time were like spending on that thing. And after that, I also went to like, like the Instagram thing. And I, because the Meteor class, like it was very, very popular on Instagram. Like they had almost like 27,000 followers so I could also like do that and um, also I did uh, create some content for the blogs and the website for them which was pretty nice because uh, you know it was like it was not that deep but they were like you know let's say um, like what are the things needed when you like what, what are the things that you need when you first come to the university like and what kind of roommates like you want to like look for when you come so it was like a basic uh, like blogs but I did write it for them and uh, I feel like mostly like I also got to learn about like most uh, like graphic designing part because I used to use like Canva a lot because like I'm a pro kind of like you know for digital summer clinic like I'm also using Canva a lot like whatever you see on marketing content but it's a very nice place to like for you know graphic designing but I did not know about Figma and stuff. So it was my teammate who taught me like how to use Figma. And it was a very, very like complex thing for me because like it was like all very complex, obviously. But uh, after she taught me like how to use it, like I'm almost there, like not 100% obviously, but I'm still like trying to learn it. But yeah, um, as an overall experience, um, I feel like not only like for the company, I got to learn a lot from the whole internship. So basically there were people from University of Michigan, like, you know, Wayne State, WCC, like well, Washington Community College. And so I think it's a very like good place to like first like do a, like start an internship career so basically like I got to talk to them and then I was like so confident enough to share my experience as well as to get their like knowledge and how I can you know contribute in my you know for the career like as an like you know for like professionally developed as well so yeah it was a very nice experience and right now like I'm currently working as a film manager and I don't think like you know before starting the internship I would have ever be able to talk like this in front of you guys you know I was like I mean, I wouldn't say I was an introvert, but obviously, like, I wouldn't be able to talk like this. But now I feel like the whole internship has, like, um, helped me, like, professionally develop and also, like, you know, yeah. So currently I'm, like, working on myself. And, yeah, that was my whole, inter like, internship experience. Thank you. Tell, tell them a little bit about, you, you've had other roles then. So um, mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about DP tutorial and, and then also... You're an RA, so so talk a little about that. Yeah, so basically, um, as Bot always tell me, like I'm very overloaded with work, so. Yeah, like currently I'm also a resident advisor at Eastern Michigan University. So I work with most of most of the athletes. Obviously, my residents are athletes, so it's very difficult to communicate with them as well. So I feel like, you know, I like everywhere I go, like there's always like communication problem in the first place, but then I like manage it somehow. And then now I'm in the right place. So it, it happens to me every time. And I, I don't think like, yeah, I think it'll be happening all the time, but I know how to like get in that point. And um, so basically for the DP tutorials that Bud just said, so it's a South Asian startup. Um, so we, EdTech startup, um, it's it's based in Bangladesh. And so me and my other friends, we started this startup uh, four years ago. 
Um, so we help students like South Asian students get into U.S. universities or let's say like Australia, Canada, and we teach them SAT, ILTS, and we tell them like, you know, from A to Z, like how to apply to universities. Because in South Asian countries, like most of us are middle class like people, so we cannot afford to study in like, you know, abroad. So we try to um, make it like, you know, help them uh, apply to universities uh, with like good scholarships and financial aids. And that's how like we are trying to grow. And we had like more than 1000 students we have taught till date, like SAT and ILTS and other courses. So yeah, it's been on that. And I'm the chief marketing officer. Um, so I have eight people working under me. Um, it's obviously like, it's very difficult sometimes because you know the time zone sometimes when like i mean the people that i work with right now they're sleeping right now so it's like midnight and daytime right now so yeah i do meetings like every thursday uh 2 a.m like uh, u.s time because it's like morning in there so you know it's very difficult to like somehow like do it but yeah it's just going i try to manage it and i feel like internship and other things that i'm doing i think it all like helped you in some way yeah. any questions for Sadie? All right, thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that might not have been good. Um, <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. Now, uh, I don't know if this comes across, but um, Sadie is a people person, okay? So um, uh, shy about talking with people. Uh, one of her big roles is uh, we were advertising an event we did in the fall, and we were out here at uh, Tech Track, uh, which is this kind of street fair that uh, Spark does as part of A2 Tech 360. And she was just running out up and down the street, buttonholing people, handing them flyers. Um, and uh, uh, and when we have her go to job fairs, it's a it's a similar sort of thing. And Sadie, do you uh, do you have a sales internship lined up for this summer? Um, so I'm going to do like I did not get the sales internship. Like I mean, I did not accept the offer, but I'm going to start a marketing intern at high school. Okay. So it's. Yeah, it's not sales, but All right. communications. Commun yes, yes. And so um, uh, so you can see kind of two. And Grant, uh, we should mention too, a vet. Okay, so, uh, and how old are you, Grant? 32. Yeah, so he, he was working with us when he was 30. Okay, and so uh, he's somebody who uh, started college, then decided to go into the military. Uh, and then finished college, okay? And, and, and so, and, you know, like I say, 80% are maybe people like Sadie, um, who are 19 to 25, but then the other 20% are some version of Grant, okay? I went and did something else, and I've gone back to school, okay? So, okay, now, key thing about interns, um, they're often very early in their careers, think in college or just graduated. Uh, if you've had experience with that age group, um, sometimes they present very well, but there's a lot of uncertainty uh, beneath the surface. Um, and uh, we have a wide range of majors. Uh, you know, I had happened to have had two marketing majors talk today, but we, we get a lot of computer science majors. We get user experience majors. Uh, we get media and visual arts majors of various sorts, uh, people who do video, people who do graphic design. We had a fine arts major um, a, uh, last year, actually, and she was also a field manager with us. Um, they typically have applied coursework. Uh, they may have significant prior internships, but they may, uh, talking with the one, a young woman um, a couple of days ago, uh, she is actually the manager, front office manager at Fresh Time, which is a, a grocery market uh, out in Ypsilanti. Uh, so think of it as kind of like a Whole Foods uh, kind of affair. Um, and um, uh, so she's got that going on, but not really necessarily a lot of marketing experience so far. So they have some kind of experience, on the job experience. It could be, um, you know, in a typical student type of employment. Uh, we get a plurality, so that means probably the largest single group is business majors, but they're not necessarily a majority, okay, um, because we kind of pull, uh, all of these other folks can do just fine too. I mean, you get that fine arts major as long as they have uh, enough 
um, uh, they're willing to do, they're, they don't see themselves as artists per se, they're willing to do graphic design and other things. They work out great. The same thing for the digital uh, media uh, folks. Um, and so, and all of those skill sets come into play. Uh, they're unsure of themselves. And I want to kind of, I mean, you saw Sadie. I mean, I, the thing that always impresses me with Sadie is, is she's very self-confident. And yet when she gets up, she says how she was intimidated by this and that. Uh, and that's often a feeling uh, that people have uh, and that they have to deal with and that we actually try to help them through. Okay. So we're uh, coming to the end here. So this is just my, this is a repeat of a previous slide. Uh, so make sure if you haven't signed up for an interview that you do so there. As of the start of this, uh, there were, um, okay, uh, uh, that was uh, our absent mentor uh, just texted me asking me to please do something, but it'll have to wait. Um, and uh, so uh, there were still slots available. Um, and uh, of course, obviously we can, we can talk now too. Um, and um, then there's that QR code again, but that's also been going out to all, all the links have been going out to in the emails. Um, and then this is actually how we are, uh, this is our student flyer. Um, and so um, you'll see what we put out there. We have 48 slots available, plenty of opportunity for you. Okay, now we'll get, I, I feel pretty certain we'll get right around 500 applicants, okay? So um, so they think, oh my God, well, you know, that's like a one in 10 uh, kind of thing for me to get selected. Uh, I'd never get selected. But what they don't know is, is that behind those numbers, 20% of those applications are effectively spam applications. So they're, they're legitimate in terms of being students, uh, but we specify that, you know, uh, we're going to be holding this in Southeast Michigan, and you're expected to show up in person. And uh, they are in a school down in Texas, and uh, they live in another state entirely. So, you know, we just weed those people right off the top. And that's somewhere around 20%, okay? F well, 15 to 20%, okay? Just based on looking at the numbers over the past year. And, you know, it, Think of ways to squeeze that down, but um, they're pretty easy to eliminate. We've got a whole process. So with those go right off the top. Then uh, you kind of get down to um, uh, finding people who fit. And then, you know, that pool is applying to a lot of other places and they get opportunities there too. So some of the people you want to get go away, okay, because they got something else. And we're a part-time internship. So they may want a full-time internship and so on and so forth. And um, so by the time we get down to it, um, uh, uh, getting 48 out of 500, uh, if you just apply and you do a good application, your chances are pretty high of getting an interview. We interview about 100, okay? Um, and, then, um, uh, and then we take 48. So if you get to the interview phase, um, then you've got about a 50-50 chance of actually getting into the inter internship. So, you know, you should apply if you if if it intrigues you. All right. Um, and so, I, I think probably the value that we bring uh, the mentors on the team is the value we bring is 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 really we have cracked how well. We have so far done a very good job of figuring out how to get and motivated um, interns and keep them motivated and produce successful outcomes. Okay, um, and startups where you maybe have one, two, three people, um, uh, we kind of provide that infrastructure for uh, keeping the interns going that you couldn't do yourselves. Okay, so I, I think that's uh, uh, another key plus. And, you know, for many of these uh, folks who are maybe working $12 an hour jobs or something like that, it'll be somewhere slightly over $18 an hour um, based on what the city of Ann Arbor sets as the living wage. We pay the living wage. Um, uh, that's actually a nice bump. Okay, 
And it's a professional experience beyond, you know, working at Best Buy. All right. So that's it in term. We're about 50 minutes in. That's it in terms of everything I have. Do we have any questions? We have any live stream questions? No live stream questions. Do we have any in-person questions? Yes. Uh, do we look at putting like interns together in a collaborative fashion? So like one engineering student and one marketing major, or is it just kind of, well, that's great. Um, what's your name? I'm Colin. I'm with uh, Fresh Coast Climate Solutions. We're looking to be a company. Okay. Um, okay. So, Colin, Fresh Coast Climate Solutions. Um, he asked, you know, do we, uh, you know, how do we figure out how to pair up the interns? Well, sometimes the interns are working on the same project together. So, as Grant described, they were working on a web development project. But sometimes we have an intern, uh, a software engineering intern, and a marketing intern together. And in fact, uh, Sadie, um, Sadie worked with Maddie. Okay, um, so so Maddie was a user experience uh, intern from Michigan State. So they worked together. And uh, user experience and marketing are related, but they're not the same. <clears throat> and so. And we've also had computer science interns working with marketing interns. So it depends um, uh, and uh, you know, what's gonna work for you. And, and the trick is, is you know, can we come up with some kind of concrete plans? And also um, I think uh, if you have a couple of different things that you would be willing to work with, okay, that can be helpful. Okay, because sometimes people say, well, we could do some of this, we could do some of that. And, you know, so you give us more than two targets, it's easier for us to find landing points for those. Okay, great question. Um, yes. As an intern, how would we interact with our mentors like over those nine weeks? How is that structured? Out? Okay, so you're a potential intern. Potential. Okay, so the uh, potential intern has appeared. Um, uh, no, but that's good. Okay, I was. We were over at School of Information, uh, holding office hours uh, about the internship, and the people who show up, who put in that extra work uh, to actually come down and meet you. Uh, you know, you think college students are all bright enough, um, and then the question is, how motivated are they? Um, and so, how do you communicate with mentors? Well, you will have plenty of opportunity in the um, mentoring sessions, uh, in the coaching sessions. And then also that is a big part of what the all hands meetings are about, okay? Is again, that free interaction. You come in, we'll, we'll have programming during that period. We'll have panels. We'll bring, bring in people from the community. So that's a chance for you to talk face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, bring up any questions. Uh, you know, there's five of us. Um, and um, uh, and have discussions. Uh, and then we also set up meetings outside of those uh, hours, you know, in case there's other stuff you want to work on. So I know that, um, uh, so one of our most successful interns, just to give you an example, um, uh, she works in performance marketing now. Uh, she, she was working for her company, which is a little bit beyond a startup. And um, they, um, uh, her boss was remote and much like Grant, she was figuring out how to connect with her boss. And we counseled her, the mentors, and it wasn't me, it was actually some of the other mentors, um, counseled her on putting together a whole little plan Okay, because part of the issue that the manager was having is the manager was overwhelmed. Okay, and so a whole so so we got with her. her name was Kayla. And we said, Kayla, what is it you think you should do? Okay, because Kayla had some ideas, and I said, okay, Kayla, put the well. I did say it. The mentor said, put those together um, and present them to your boss as a thing you want to do, and and with an implementation plan. She did that. Um, that worked out successfully. She wound up getting hired full time um, once uh, she left the internship because, um, you know, she was able to, um, you know, provide value, which is what people are looking for uh, when they pay you money to be their employee. And so, so that you'll, you'll have plenty of opportunity. 
Okay, we uh, um, and uh, uh, it, and uh, I think really uh, the all. Would you say, Sufyan, the all hands meetings? Uh, the in person one where you can meet and chat. After that, in, you know, the, uh, the office hours. Think about it as office hours. Yeah, yeah you can send yeah, us an email and um, we can have people who have the meeting. Yeah, the yep. in person meeting, like you can talk to the mentors and also all the other okay. interns. So it's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's not a like formal mm -hmm. thing, but you can just go around and it's like a speed dating, but like professionally, <laughs> just go like to everyone and talk. Yeah, it's nice. Right. 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 Okay. Yes. So, um, next meeting, General Explora, it's a data management uh, AI backed. Project. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what if you uh, design a project and the project gets done halfway through? Um, then what do you do? <laughs> well, you know, we, we, I mean, it's hard to like judge how long it's going to take a student. Um, well, well, and I think that's actually good. That's, that's a good point. It can be hard to know, uh, how long, what it's going to take a student. So I would, I would recommend in that case, think about a series of things you could potentially do. Okay. And then now, and if, which is in fact a little bit how I run uh, the projects with the students. So I, I'm often very, I, I have ambitious ideas uh, and then I have must have ideas. Okay. And if this doesn't work, then, you know, we're going kaplooey. Um, and, um, uh, and so, but sometimes we get done with that stuff. It is all sort of depends on the team and the challenges they face. And so then I have other things in my back pocket that I just trot out. Okay. So maybe with the measures, right. I mean, there probably would be some student agreement on what the next thing or well, right. the first well, thing and then the next thing that they would be able right. to doing. Right. And and teams, uh, the student teams talk with their managers, uh, and uh, you know then the the and and we didn't have anybody talk about. Well, actually, uh, Grant uh, talked with his manager. They worked out a whole communication strategy. Um, uh, I remember uh, he and his partner were kind of kind of who just recently graduated. She contacted me over winter break, but um, we're kind of pulling their hair out over that one. And, and so what we uh, tried to do is, is, you know, work with people to figure out how to get the situation to work. Okay. So, so that they're kind of taking initiative. And so, yes, you would, you know, agree with the students, but the students are typically, um, uh, they're looking for your approval. Okay. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's very important to them. So I would say have a have a must list yeah. things you and then a wish list, right? And then and then things will Perfect. evolve. Right. I know there's a match that's made, right? Right. And so, we, so I'm assuming if we initially get a marketing person, we should have a marketing wish list. Well, here's yeah, and so here's what I would say, Maxine is. Um, you know, we we do. I have been talking with people who are what I'll call junior data scientists, okay? And, um, you know, so we, uh, to give you an example, we, we had a uh, data science uh, major uh, who was working with uh, a company called Dynamo Metrics a few years ago. And uh, they had her get in uh, and they were trying to figure out what to do with her. So what, she was actually a good writer. So they had her producing some white papers, helping them with that. But then they also had her uh, getting into their code base. And she ultimately went to work uh, for um, the um, Mathematica. Isn't that the name of that? Yes. She went to work there uh, in Mathematica research. I think it's called something else. Uh, Wolfram something, maybe. I think it's Stephen Wolfram. Or I can't remember. But at any rate, she went, yeah, yeah, she went to work uh, for them. Um, and uh, uh, and Dynamo Metrics actually were, wanted her not to finish her senior year and stick on with them. Okay, now she's kind of, she's the exceptional case. Um, but, um, uh, but we've definitely had uh, data science oriented people. 
And you can sometimes be amazed at what these folks can produce and the value they can provide um, because there's all these little things that suddenly you don't have to worry about. Yes. Okay. So my question is, I assume for these marketing interns that there are certain resources they need to be successful, software they like to use, computers. Um, can you give an indication of what's typical for what a company provides during the internship? Oh, uh, that's great. So we ask the interns, uh, this is actually a question during the interviews, um, what kind of computer do they have and how long ago did they get it? And then I ask them for the kinds of things you do. So, you know, you're doing Canva, you're doing data science. Is this thing adequate? Okay. Um, and, and so I think you can probably expect the person to be able to show up with some kind of laptop. Okay. That's in pretty good working order. Now where uh, things start to get a little dicey, um, is, you know, people say, well, I want somebody who can do the Adobe suite. Well, the Adobe suite for education for students is free. When you're not a student, it's pretty expensive, okay? And um, so, um, you know, if you're looking for something like that, then we would expect probably that you would provide it. Figma, I, that a lot of the students uh, use Figma. Um, to be honest with you, I have no idea what the licensing terms are on that. I guess Adobe tried to buy them and it didn't work out. Um, but, um, uh, but you know, if you're expecting them to kind of use professional software, then you probably need to bring them under your license. The same thing if you're running Slack, you know, and you want them to be on your Slack and, and you're doing a paid Slack or a paid some other software you want them to use, then, you know, expect to add a seat for the summer. But they should have a computer that is adequate um, uh, to do most things. We don't expect you to hand out computers. Sometimes companies do just because they have that, but um, we don't expect it. Anything else? Well, amazingly, uh, we're one, well, we're one hour and two minutes into the live stream. Uh, and so we can end the live stream here.